Hi, this is Ian Ferguson from Link Software Technologies. Welcome to another episode in the, the series of videos, Ask the Expert. With me, I have uh, Dave Beale, Direct, Director of Product Management here at uh, Lynx. Welcome. Hi, thank you, Ian. So I had a couple of questions for you. Hopefully nothing too scary. Um, you know, so firstly, you know, out on the marketplace, there's a number of hypervisors out there. Um, what do you see as different in the Link Secure product? And think about it in terms of what a customer would see in terms of how they would use our product. All right, sure, yeah. Um, Link Secure is different in its simplicity. Um, compared to other hypervisors on the market, they do a lot of dynamic operations, a lot of functionality. Um, we're simple and basic. We start off by being a static partitioning system where we simply configure the hardware platform to create independent and isolated hardware instances or subsystems for virtual machines. Okay. Once we create those virtual machines, we then simply load and boot the operating system, and then we get out of the way. That's the extent to which the separation kernel hypervisor interacts with the system uh, from an initial boot up. Okay. Now, in this way, it makes Link Secure modular, the customer, now that their operating systems have booted, gets to define the exact privileges and hardware that's available to each of those guests so that they can perform the specific tasks or functions of the system with the best operating system for that job. Gotcha. And um, maybe given us an example of what that would look like in a real application? In a real application, we would have a mixed, um, let's say, an autonomous type application where we have Linux, which may be doing uh, normal networking capabilities. Linux is very strong in networking and network stacks. Right. So we can use Linux for the networking stacks. We can use a real-time operating system to take care of the Autozar functionality or the machine control functionality. So Dave, you talked about simplicity mm -hmm. in the product. That often implies things that you give up. Right. Um, so talk to a little bit about um, Link Secure and what's not in there. Yeah, sure. Um, to talk about what's not in the product and simplicity requires a little understanding of Link's philosophy. Okay, Sort of based on three things. A system with few moving parts and few entry doors is safer than a system with a lot of complex parts and a lot of entry points. A lot of ways to get in. Right. Okay. Number two, operations that can modify a key aspect of the hardware platform itself you know what, that's great for convenience. You can do all sorts of things during runtime, but it brings in um, some concerns, shall we say, for safety and security, because things become unpredictable at the platform level. Right. Um, finally, um, competing solutions for hypervisors rely on a fundamental um, root OS or trusted OS or privileged OS. Right. And this means that if that operating system or microkernel becomes compromised, the whole system itself can become compromised because it is super privileged. Um, so we believe that the customer shouldn't have to rely on a super privileged set of software and that sh they should be able to define the role and the accesses that each of the guests receives without some de facto requirement to have this side channel um, super privileged OS. Now, so the key differences now with those philosophies in mind, the key differences on Link Secure are that we don't reconfigure the hardware after boot. It's static partitioning, the configuration is set, therefore no malware, no bugs, no other considerations can come in and redefine the platform while it's supposed to be flying the aircraft. Right. Um, we don't perform any memory management. Memory management is wholly left up to the guest operating systems. We don't perform any, so we're completely out of the loop. There's no asynchronous memory management operation happening because one guest over here and another guest over there are doing things uh, in a different manner. Gotcha. Okay. Um, we don't um, run any applications because we don't have that super privileged OS, because we're a binary separation kernel that simply does partitioning. We don't run applications. We don't have any device drivers for externally facing devices. We are simple, we are clean, we are, we are very low and lightweight. Um, finally, um, when guests, one guest OS and another guest OS want to exchange data, Link Secure Separation Kernel Hypervisor doesn't intercept that data. It goes directly from guest 
to guest, and we can't even see or monitor the data. So it's completely secure without a side channel attack via the uh, separation kernel. Gotcha. Okay, so um, a lot of things that aren't in there and move to other parts of the system. Um, tell me a little bit then about you know a developer getting their arms around and then naturally using Link Secure in a product. How, how uh -huh. does a developer get started? Yeah, sure. Um, the development model, because we don't have that super privileged OS, the development model is a little bit different. You as the developer can look at the whole system and you say, what functions do I have that are housekeeping functions or system, routine system functions and time critical functions? You can decide which of those functions to assign to which guest operating system. Linux, real-time OS, bare metal executable, um, and that type of uh, example. You just, once you've decided which operating system you want to deal with which function or operation, you then set the configuration file within Link Secure to define the CPU cycles that'll be applied to that specific operating system, the hardware resources, that's devices, peripherals, memory addresses, right. and also you can define the specific hypercalls. Now a hypercall is a call within Link Secure separation kernel hypervisor that allows you to control some very specific and very narrow operations of that hypervisor. So if I want to define one operating system as the operating system that manages guest OS restart, then I can give that operating system the privilege and the right to access that hypercall within the hypervisor itself. So in this way, we're flexible. We can distribute the overall system functionality among multiple guests, giving each one the needed hypercalls and the needed memory and peripheral access that's required for that specific function. It's all, it's all distributed functionality rather than centralized functionality that you'll find in other solutions.